Hi everybody! Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm Jennifer Cohen Harper and I am thrilled to be here with the Omega Institute um, to chat with you about breath work and helping kids, children, adolescents um, access the power of their breath helping caregivers and educators and clinicians um, share breath work with kids in ways that are helpful, that are effective, um, and to celebrate sharing um, the launch of my new book, Thank You Breath, Finding Peace and Power from the Inside Out. Um, I'm very grateful to Omega for helping me celebrate the launch of this book and for helping me bring these ideas forward to you all. I hope that they're useful. So before we dive in and get started, I'd be so appreciative if you would just take um, a minute or two to sit with me and pay attention to your own breath. So before we get started, let's just find a way to sit comfortably. Um, you could also stand if you're standing, that's fine. Um, but just find a way to get comfortable, however um, that works for you, however that feels good for you. I'm gonna just sit up a little bit taller and I'm gonna bring my hands to my heart and to my belly. And if that works for you, you can do that too. And then just bring your attention to your breath. You don't have to do anything to change it. You don't have to breathe in any particular way yet. Just notice your breath. If it works for you to close your eyes, you can, of course. See if that changes how you feel. Notice if you can feel your breath moving in your body, under either one of your hands if you have them there. Notice if your breath has any information for you. Are you breathing fast or slow? Are you breathing through your nose or your mouth? Maybe your inhale is longer than your exhale or vice versa. Just take a moment to investigate your breath. Notice what's going on with it. And now, if you're not doing so already, see if you can slow your breath down and breathe in and out just through your nose. Find a steady, even rhythm to your breath. So your inhale and your exhale are about the same length. And as you slow your breath down, find an even rhythm. Notice if anything feels different in your body, your mind. And take one or two more rounds of breath here. And whenever you're ready, on an inhale, reach your arms way up overhead. You can't see my fingers, but I'm wiggling them. Just bring in some energy up. 
And then on an exhale, give your arms a little shake on the way down. Maybe even sigh. <sighs> All right. Thank you for joining me in that short practice. And I would just ask you to notice if taking that couple of minutes to focus on your breath, to pay attention to breathing, which you are already doing, um, but may not have been noticing, um, just to ask yourself if doing that for a minute or two um, made you feel different in any way. You know, many of us have had experiences of using our breath in day-to-day -day life as a powerful resource. And so much of my work is focused on the idea of helping our kids access their inner resources and use them in times of challenge. So when I think about our kids' inner resources and our inner resources as well, I'm thinking about the inner resources of our body, of our mindset, and our breath. And this book, Thank You Breath, um, that I just recently published for kids, um, this is the third book in a series called the Thank You Children series. And each one of these books focuses on one of these inner resources. So my first book, Thank You Body, Thank You Heart, focused on cultivating gratitude and, and self-compassion for the physical body. Um, the second book, Thank You Mind, Understanding My Big Feelings on Tricky Days, um, was all about how we can use our mindset to help us um, make sense of a wide variety of big emotions. And then this book, Thank You Breath, which I'm so excited about and so, um, so happy to be sharing with you all, this book is is about helping our kids harness the power of their breath both to find a bit more peace in what can be a very turbulent world and also to tap into a sense of personal power um, using their breath not only to settle down but also to energize and um, to, to fully come alive um, in an embodied way. And I'm really excited to share Thank You Breath with you all and to talk about these practices in large part because I found that in my teaching, in my parenting, helping kids access the power of their breath is one of the most, um, it's one of the most effective practices that I can offer them. It's one of the things that if they can integrate it into their day-to-day -day life, really has the the possibility to radically transform how they feel on a day-to-day -day basis, even if everything around them stays the same, right? So maybe you've had experiences in your life where you can't change what's happening on the outside, but you really can change what's happening on the inside. And changing what's happening on the inside doesn't necessarily mean everything's fine, but it means you can connect to yourself in a way that lets you make choices about how to move forward so that you're not stuck in a situation where the outside world's giving you input and you're just reacting to it all the time in a way that's disconnected from your body and your intentions and your needs. Um, being able to connect with our breath can help us find more power in our day-to-day -day life because it can help us connect with the part of ourselves, the part of our brain um, that can make choices even in difficult um, circumstances that maybe were overwhelming just a few minutes ago. So the breath has a lot of power in it. It also um, is tricky. It's tricky to help kids understand how to use their breath. And even with like 15 plus years of teaching mindfulness and yoga, including a lot of breath work um, to many thousands of kids, when I had my own kids and as my own kids um, got older and I wanted to share these practices with them, um, I found myself making some mistakes. And that's a big part of the reason that I wrote this book because I know there's power in sharing these practices with kids. And I also know that even when we are very well intentioned and even when we like know what we're doing, it's really easy to mess up and inadvertently make um, challenging situations worse, um, not better. 
So I'm hoping that I can spend a little bit of time with you today on this live stream sharing some of my mistakes so that you don't um, have to make them or so that if you've already made them, you will remember that you're not alone. Um, and I want to share with you ways in which I've regrouped um, and thought through how to share these practices both in my professional life but also with my own children in ways that are more helpful. Um, and then I will read the book for you all um, and I hope that you enjoy it and that it's useful. Um, the book is meant to both give kids an introduction to um, all of the ways in which their breath supports them throughout the day. It's meant to give them information, but it's also meant to be a conversation starter. So I hope you'll keep that in mind as you listen. It's like, what are the ways in which we can talk to kids about their breath? Um, and I always find with my own kids that when I, um, when I have big important things that I want to talk to them about, having the support of a good book to do it um, goes a long way both in making me feel more comfortable and more empowered in the conversation and also helping them um, take it in in ways that feel um, sort of like there's less pressure it's just a it's just a story and we're gonna see what we learn from it together okay so when I'm gonna start with when my kids were babies. Um, and I'm speaking from the parenting perspective here. Um, I have a five-year-old and I have a nine-year-old, um, both of whom um, have had various ups and downs of um, anxiety in their life. Of course, you know, parenting through COVID and many other challenges. Um, we've had our fair share of overwhelm and disconnection and, um, and fear and anxiety in the household. Um, but I think about when my kids were really little, it was so easy to support them with breath work. And my go-to strategy when my kids were babies um, and they were having a hard time, they were dysregulated, they were overstimulated, overwhelmed, my first go-to strategy was almost always to pick them up and bring them to my chest and bring my attention to my breath and slow my breath down, make sure that they could feel my breath through my body, right, in their body. And paying attention to my own breath was the way that I regulated myself when my kids were having a hard time. And when they were babies, this was the strategy because what else was there to do really? I mean, you can rock and shush and walk and put them in the car seat and go for a drive. But when your kids are really little, you can't tell them, hey, stop crying. It's not gonna work, right? It doesn't work when they're bigger either. But anytime I would bring my babies to my body and use my breath to regulate my own nervous system, inevitably, like a, like a magnet, right, a co-regulation magnet, my regulated nervous system would start to pull their dysregulated nervous system into attunement, into a, a greater sense of safety. And I was using my breath to help regulate myself and through co-regulation, help regulate them without giving them any information, without telling them what to do, and oftentimes without really changing what was going on in the external environment, other than now they were with me um, experiencing the breath together. And of course, sometimes I would do this and maybe it would take a lot longer than I was hoping for the situation to get um, more settled. Um, it's not like a magic bullet. It wasn't, you know, always like, okay, breathe with my baby and they were instantly better. Um, but really almost inevitably with very, very few exceptions, um, breathing together is what helped my kids settle their nervous system when they were young. And then they got a little bigger, right? And they started talking and being able to um, receive instructions and receive language and receive information. And I made the really big mistake of starting to shift from come breathe with me to you're upset, 
why don't you breathe? And on its own, that may not seem like such a big deal or such a big problem because our kids actually can support themselves often with regulation of the breath. But the way that I was offering it skipped so many important steps. And I want to share those with you so that um, you can use breath work with your kids um, in a way that is more helpful than, oh, you're upset? Take a deep breath. Right. And like I mentioned earlier, even with many years of teaching experience in the caregiving relationship, this idea of like, you're having a hard time, take a deep breath was so ingrained in me that I would find my own kids getting upset and I would be saying, take a deep breath while my I was like all over the place. And somehow, as soon as my kids got big enough to like walk and talk and um talk back, right? My instinct shifted from, Jen, regulate yourself so that you can create space for them to be comfortable and settled over time to, hey, I got to get this kid calmed down, right? And guess what? They heard that message. And just like telling a person who's really upset to calm down usually backfires, telling a child or an adult who's dysregulated or overwhelmed or having big, big feelings, telling them to take a deep breath usually backfires. Even if you use different words like, okay, pay attention to your breath, it usually backfires um, for two really, um, really straightforward reasons that in hindsight, it, it makes me laugh because they're so obvious, right? One is oftentimes when we tell a kid to take a deep breath, they hear a message of the grown up needs me to stop crying or stop yelling or stop being upset to make them more comfortable, right? Oftentimes, if we are telling our kids to do something when they're upset, they don't take it in as my grown up is trying to help me, my grown up is trying to support me. They take it as um, my big feelings are being dismissed you don't understand, you just want me to stop, right? And if we're honest, sometimes we do, right? Because we get dysregulated by their dysregulated behavior, right? So oftentimes we start telling our kids to use breathing practices when they're upset and it actually creates disconnection and it makes them feel dismissed, right? We're gonna come back to that in a minute. The other thing that often happens when we tell kids to take a deep breath and Believe me, if you've said this a million times, you're not alone. I still find myself like almost saying it sometimes. Often if we tell our kids to take a deep breath when they're upset, they do something like this. <gasps> right? Have you ever seen a kid do that? Right? Or maybe you've done it yourself when you're worked up and somebody tells you take a deep breath and you're like, I'm trying. And you take this big, big inhale through your mouth. And what happens is, we forget that the breath can be used to help us settle our energy, but it can also be used to help us increase our energy, right? With kids, we're often very focused on the settling part, which I totally get. Um, but when kids are upset and we tell them take a deep breath and they take that big, big inhale, that is usually sending their energy up. Right? It's doing the exact opposite of what we were hoping for. It's actually increasing their energy. Right? And you can think about the breath, um, having an inhale and an exhale, the inhale being the energy rising part of the breath, and the exhale being the settling energy part of the breath or the grounding part of the breath. And when we do things that um, have focus on the inhale when we take a big big inhale if our inhale is longer than our exhale or we inhale and then hold our breath that is energy rising that is usually going to escalate their nervous system response that is going to escalate whatever the big energy is that's happening so it's very easy to see why that would backfire okay so what do we do instead what do we do instead? So when I think about the things that have helped me regroup and use breath work in ways that actually help my kids, um, I pull back 
and think about um, a step-by-step -step process, right? And the first step in helping our kids learn to use their breath when things are challenging is actually helping them just notice their breath, right? Notice when they're breathing in, notice when they're breathing out. Notice how changing their breath throughout the, the day, sometimes in ways that are really playful, blow a pinwheel, right? Blow some bubbles. Notice how changing your breath throughout the day um, makes you feel, right? Help kids connect with the fact that, oh, I'm breathing in now and this is how it feels. I'm breathing out now and this is how it feels without any agenda, right? The first step in, in being able to use our breath is just noticing what's going on with it, connecting with it, right? Feeling um, like we're in relationship with our breath, right? That's the first step. And then the second step is really getting playful, right? The second step is getting playful. So with my kids, um, I'm doing things like I just mentioned, maybe blowing bubbles, um, but also playing with um, experimenting, like how much energy do we have? What can we do to bring it up? What can we do to bring it down? And it's not when they're upset, and it's not when they're having a hard time. It's not with the intention of trying to change anything, it's really play. And for kids, play happens in connection, right? And telling somebody what to do is a really good way to disconnect, right? So when we're playing with the breath with our kids, we gotta be in it with them, right? Not like giving it to them for them because something's wrong, but really just in it with them. And in it with them in the playful times is a really important way that they learn about breath. And in it with them in the challenging times is also a way that they learn about breath, but not because we're giving it to them, because we're giving it to ourselves. So for me, when I hear myself or feel myself start to want to say, take a deep breath to my kids, and I still get that impulse like all the time, right? It's, it's deep in there, right? My kids are upset and I wanna tell them to do something with their breath. I actually use that as a trigger for myself Right? Instead of letting those words come out of my mouth, take a breath, just pay attention to your breath, just breathe, take a deep, whatever words I'm trying to say, instead of letting them come out of my mouth, I redirect them and I use them as a trigger for myself. So if I have an impulse to tell my nine-year-old to take a breath, I take a breath. I say, Jen, pay attention to your breathing. And I go right back to like when they were babies. My, she doesn't want to like lay on my chest so much anymore, sadly. But even at a little bit of a distance, right, I redirect that energy to myself and say, regulate yourself, breathe for yourself. And then, and this sounds a little like hokey maybe, but like think about projecting that regulated energy, that like zone of nervous system regulation that I'm creating by focusing on my breath, project that out all the way to wherever my kid is. <laughs> wherever that kid is, I'm actually imagining, right? In that moment, I'm not trying to change anything about them. I'm actually imagining um, almost like enveloping them, like hugging them <laughs> with my regulated nervous system in a way that is communicating not you have to change, but you're not freaking me out. Your big feelings, your, even if it's anger, whatever it is, your big feelings are safe to have because I am wrapping you in the bubble of my self-regulation. Okay? You are safe to have those big feelings because I've got you. Right? And sometimes kids, you know, they get scared of their big feelings because they don't know how their big feelings are going to make them act. And then they don't know what that's going to do to their relationships and if they're going to get in trouble and it's, it's, it's a whole spiral, right? But we actually, instead of telling our kids take a deep breath, we can actually tell ourselves to take a deep breath so we can create more safety for them to move through the emotion. And once they feel safe, right, having the feeling, then they're actually safe enough to connect. They're safe enough to notice what we're doing. They're safe enough to feel um, the steadiness of our energy. And 
just like when they're babies, right? Sometimes it takes a little while, but just like when they're babies, slowly they can start to settle, right? And it's not because I told them to do something, it's because I did something, right? I did something and let them do their thing. And it doesn't mean that they're gonna settle into being fine. <laughs> it doesn't mean like, okay, I breathed for a few minutes, now everything is okay. What it means is that I regulated myself enough to give their nervous system a sense of safety and they've settled enough to take the next step. And maybe the next step is going for a walk or um, tossing a ball back and forth or having a conversation, right? Or, or some sort of re-entry into the situation, right? It doesn't mean I breathed and everything's fine, but it's like I created enough safety for them to have the emotion and then become reconnected with me so that we could take the next step together. Right? So that's the next part of teaching kids to use their breath is the co-regulation of paying attention to my own breath. Right? And while I'm doing that, I'm also providing really important modeling. Right? And I'm providing for my kids an embodied experience of the breath helping them feel better. Right? Because even if there's no talking, I'm breathing, their breath naturally starts to sync up with mine. Right? And they're having an embodied experience of slowing their breath down and that helping them feel better. And that embodied experience creates an opening. Right? It doesn't do the whole job for us, but it does create an opening. And that opening is where now we can start to um, get our kids curious about how they can use their breath in day-to-day -day life to change how they feel even when the outside world is not changing, right? So now we have an opening where we can start to teach them breath work practices, um, the more formal ones, the informal ones, um, and practice, help them practice noticing when I breathe in this way, this is how I feel. When I breathe in this way, this is how I feel. And we can go out into the world with them and explore using those practices when the stakes are really low, right? Like I'm waiting online and it's taking longer than I thought and I'm starting to get irritated, <laughs> right? Does breathing change how I feel, right? Really low stake situations are the first place that we wanna introduce kids to the idea that you can actually use your breath to change how you feel when you're wanting to move towards feeling something different internally than you are. And those low stake situations help them get those practices into their body in a more natural way. And then when the stakes are higher, right, when they're really having a hard time, when they're really overwhelmed, when they're really dysregulated, right, those practices will already be in their body, right? So if those practices aren't already in their body and we try to give them to them like prefrontal cortex to prefrontal cortex when they're upset, it's never gonna work, right? Both for the reasons I mentioned earlier and because the prefrontal cortex is not available, <laughs> right? In those really dysregulated, challenging moments, right? That prefrontal cortex is just not available. So what we give them with our words, with our explanations, not gonna be useful. But if we've gone through these stages of noticing the breath, playing with the breath, breathing together, right? practicing when the stakes are low, we've helped our kids internalize these practices so they're available to them of their own choice right? when things are much, much harder. Right? Now, it's not always going to be an automatic, even if they've done lots of breath work practice in the past, it's not always going to be automatic that when things get really hard, they turn to that resource. It's not always automatic for us as adults either. But the more we practice co-regulation, the more we practice breathing together, right? Turning that take a deep breath to ourselves, right? Turning that information to ourselves and offering them the, the safety of our own regulation of audibly and visibly breathing with the intention of inviting them into our shared experience. The more we do that when things are hard, um, the more practice they will have doing this when things are hard, even if it wasn't their idea.
right? But breathing together is so much more effective and powerful than telling a kid to breathe when they're having a hard time. It's also harder for us, right? It's harder for us to do it because we have to actually like practice what we're preaching, right? It is very, um, is very common and very easy to want to offer our kids something that we like, you know, don't always take our own advice on, right? I'm, I'm forever telling my kids to like be eating healthy food when and then I think about what I just ate today and I'm like, oh gosh, or talking to them about how important it is to get um, a good night's rest and then I'm staying up way later than I need to. And, you know, it's very, very common to be wanting for our kids like the best and not showing them the, the care of ourselves that would actually help them um, feel that that's really important and learn how to do it, right? And it's no different with mindfulness practices um, and breath work practices. If we're not using these practices in our day-to-day -day life, if we're like talking to kids about their inner resources um, and then like when things are going wrong with us, we're like not anywhere near our inner resources. We're like spiraling that is not um, a congruent <laughs> message, right? It will be hard for our kids to um, access these things that we're offering them if they don't see us using them um, and if we're not using them together. All right, so I'm gonna pause there um, and just kind of recap a little bit. Um, if you are sharing breath work with your kids and it is making things worse <laughs> instead of better, it is okay, we have all been there. Just pull back a little bit and ask, are they feeling like what I'm offering is dismissive? Are they feeling like I'm asking them to breathe for me instead of for them? Or do they not have the skills to do this in a way that's useful? Are they taking big breaths in through their mouth? Are they hyperventilating when I offer breath work? Um, or have we not done this enough when things are good for it to be available to them when things are hard, right? And kids regroup, right? It's actually very possible, it's not even that challenging to pull back and say, I've been doing this all wrong, let's try it in a different way, right? I'm gonna try doing this for myself, do you wanna do this with me, right? And a big part of the reason that I wrote Thank You Breath is to open the door to curiosity about the breath for our kids um, and open um, the door to conversation between caregivers and children, teachers and children, even clinicians and children, um, conversations about all of the power our breath has and how we can use it um, to support ourselves in our day-to-day -day life. So thank you for listening. Um, I'm gonna re I'm gonna read the book. Um, before I do, I want to share um, that there is a discount code available for folks on this um, live stream and in the Omega community. Um, we'll pop that into the chat box and into the comments after the video is recorded. So if you did want to pick up a copy, please make sure to use that discount code and um, you know get a few dollars off. Um, and if you enjoy the book and if you want to support it, I'd be so, so grateful if you took a couple of minutes to um, put a review in Amazon or Goodreads or wherever you, um, wherever you like because it really does help quite a lot. Um, and finally, before I read, I want to mention that if these practices are really interesting to you, um, if you want to learn more, um, we have a couple of opportunities coming up. I'm, I'm going to be um, leading a free, very um, practical webinar in a couple of weeks, specifically on breath work for kids. Um, and that's coming up, I think, September 7th. Um, and then I'm going to be offering um, a supported course with an online course with the Omega Institute, um, specifically on navigating childhood anxiety um, and exploring practices to help our kids move through their life with a sense of personal power um, and with greater access to their inner resources. And that is an eight week online course um, that offers a combination of self-paced content 
and live streams. So we're gonna be doing a live stream every Friday afternoon, um, spending some time together talking about how to implement these practices, answering questions, um, and making sure that you just get the most out of um, the course that you can. So that course is called um, Navigating Childhood Anxiety, Meeting Stress with Inner Strength. Um, and I also, I wanted to share a little video clip of one of my favorite breathwork practices for caregivers and kids to do together with you, but technology being what it is, I cannot figure out how to share it on the live stream. So I'm going to post that practice, the video of that practice um, in the community right after the live stream is over. Um, so if you wanna check that out, that's called back-to-back -back breathing. Um, and it is a practice that has gone a long, long way for me, um, both with the kids that I work with and my own kids. So I hope it might be helpful for you as well. All right, thank you for listening and I am going to read. Thank you, Breath, finding peace and power from the inside out. Did you know you have a superpower? We all do our breath. Right now, every one of us is breathing. We may not be paying any attention to our breath, but it's there for us all the time. With a little awareness and a bit of practice, we can all use our breath to help us power up when we need energy, settle down when we're overwhelmed, and lots more. I hope this book helps you discover all the hidden powers your breath can offer you. The breath I take to stay alive has hidden powers that help me thrive. It supports me in all kinds of ways and brings me peace on many days. When I wake up, a big breath in tells my body it's time to begin. A new day is here and I'm moving slow, but a breath of fresh air helps me get up and go. I head toward the kitchen to see who's awake. A scent meets me first, someone started to bake. Thank you, breath, for bringing this treat. Traveling on the air, it's delightfully sweet. When I head outside, a gentle wind blows. I feel it around me right down to my toes. The earth making wishes, a dandelion breeze. I add my breath to it feeling peaceful, at ease. Thank you, breath, for helping me play. I notice you changing throughout the whole day. Sometimes you're soft and sometimes you're strong. Some breaths are bubbly, some steady and long. Some breaths help me jump and some help me sing. I'm grateful for all the joys my breath brings. When I give it some thought, it's easy to see. There's much more to breathing than there first seems to be. There are times as well when I slow my breath down to stop my worries from swirling around. My fears aren't gone, but they're not quite as loud. I take a short pause and step back from the crowd. A giant sigh out, and I'm ready to stand, accepting some help from a warm, loving hand. My breath connects me to a strength deep inside and helps me find courage when it's trying to hide. I head into the world and I do my best. Moving my body helps when I'm stressed. And while I move, my breath is right there, powering me up with energizing air. Listening to my breath is a wonderful way to relax when it's time to wind down for the day. Inhale and exhale and after a while, without knowing the reason, I feel myself smile. When the world goes sideways or upside down, when I wanna shout out or stomp on the ground, I feel angry feelings beginning to rise. 
but a breath helps me pause and see through others' eyes. If I don't want to talk, if I just want to be, it can help if someone stays close by to me. Breathing together makes me feel less alone, like someone just gets it, my feelings are known. In the quiet of night, when the world goes to bed, I count my breaths and it settles my head. The swirling and whirling of thoughts from the day start slowing down and have less to say. Then all through the night, my breath knows what to do. Breathing in, breathing out, and yours does it too. Thank you, breath, for helping me see the peace, power, and joy that all live inside me. Thank you so much for joining me today, everyone. Um, the book also has some practices to do together with your kids in the back, some notes for caregivers, things like that. And I really, truly hope that it can be a resource for you. Um, our kids are living through some challenging times and I think it's so important that we give them all of the tools that we can to help them navigate the challenges they face truly connected to themselves, their own body, their own breath, their own intention, their own heart, um, and that we do it in ways um, that don't leave them on their own to access these inner resources. You know, that's a challenge we can sometimes face as we, as we build up our kids' sense of personal power and their capacity to use their inner resources. Um, it can be easy to um, create situations where they feel a little, um, a little alone in using them. Um, and I just wanna be clear that these inner resources allow us to tap into our personal power, but personal power is more powerful um, in community and when we're connected. So don't shy away from being, um, being there for your kids. Um, in all of the ways that we've been talking about today because you think it will stop them from standing on their own two feet. It won't. It's actually the best way to help them feel what it feels like to use their inner resources um, is using them together with us. And then when we do that when we're around, they can carry that feeling out into the world even when we're not there. Thank you so much for joining me, everyone. I hope you have a good rest of the day. Um, and if you have any questions, I am so happy if you wanna pop them into the, the chat and I will come back on a little while when the video is um, live and recorded and in Facebook land, I'll, uh, I'll come on and answer those questions happily. Thank you so much, everybody. See you soon.